Hello, and welcome to today's episode of the ESL for You podcast, the podcast where we explore different topics related to global issues and trends. I'm your host, Fabi, and in this episode, we're going to talk about birth rate around the world. So, what is birth rate? Birth rate is the number of live births per 1,000 people in a population over a specific period of time, usually a year. It is closely related to the fertility rate, which is the average number of children that women in a given country give birth to during their childbearing years. So, why is birth rate important? Birth rate is important because it affects the size and structure of a population, which in turn has implications for the economy, society, environment, and health of a country. For example, a high birth rate can lead to overpopulation, which can cause problems such as poverty, overcrowding, pollution, and resource depletion. On the other hand, a low birth rate can lead to population decline, which can cause problems such as aging, labor shortage, social security deficit, and economic stagnation. So, how does birth rate vary around the world? Birth rate varies drastically by country and region. And according to the CIA World Factbook 2021 estimate, the top 10 countries with the highest birth rates are all in Africa, with Niger at the top with 46.86 births per 1,000 people. The top 10 countries with the lowest birth rate are mostly in Europe and East Asia, with Monaco at the bottom with 6.63 births per 1,000 people. So, what are some factors that influence birth rate? There are many factors that influence birth rate, such as culture, religion, education, income, healthcare, family planning, gender equality, and government policies. So, generally speaking, countries with higher levels of development tend to have lower birth rates than countries with lower levels of development. This is because in more developed countries, well, we tend to have better access to education and health care, which can reduce infant mortality and increase life expectancy. This, well, is because they also tend to have opportunities and choices for women who can pursue higher education and careers instead of having many children. They also tend to have more effective family planning programs and policies that encourage smaller families. So, what are some challenges and opportunities that different birth rates pose for the world? So, different birth rates pose different challenges and opportunities. So, remember that whenever you encounter a challenge, there is also opportunity in disguise. So, for countries with high birth rates, one of the main challenges is to provide adequate food, water, housing, education, and health care for their growing populations. They also need to create more jobs and economic opportunities for their young and productive workforce. And one of the main opportunities is to harness their demographic dividend, which is a potential economic growth that can result from having a large proportion of working age people in a population. And for countries with low birth rates, one of the main challenges is to cope with an aging and shrinking population. And that's already happening, people. How many of you live in Canada now because, you know, there's so many job opportunities due to an aging and shrinking population? I think many of you do because many of my students do. They live in Canada and they work and live in Canada. Many are from Syria or from Brazil or from Mexico. So many people have um, migrated to Canada because of the work opportunities they they offer. So, yeah. So shrink countries with shrinking popu- with a shrinking population or aging population need to find ways to maintain their economic productivity and competitiveness while supporting their elderly and dependent population. They also need to address the social and physiological and psychological issues that can arise from having fewer children and families. Yeah, there could be it could be devastating actually. But one of the main opportunities is to invest in human capital and innovation, which can enhance the quality of life and well-being. So, you know, 
this AI stuff that has emerged <laughs>、um, lately has me thinking about. What will the future hold for an aging population? Because I don't have any kids. I don't plan to have any kids. So maybe in the future I'll be able to buy a robot <laughs> that can take care of me. Or many people might think like that.、Um, so, how can we achieve a sustainable balance between population and resources? That is a good question. Achieving a sustainable balance between population and resources is one of the most pressing challenges for humanity in the 21st century. There's no simple or universal solution for this problem, but some possible strategies include improving access to education and health care for all people, especially women and girls. And it's not because I'm a feminist or because I want、um, more than equality, I want superiority, but well, better access to health care for women and girls would,、um, well, may lead us, <laughs> all of us, to want to have children. And then promoting gender equality and women's empowerment, that is also very important. Expanding family, planning services and reproductive rights, reducing poverty and inequality, encouraging responsible consumption and production, fostering cooperation and solidarity among countries and regions. All of these are important. And, well, to me, it is no surprise that you know, birth rates are dropping worldwide. The fact is that having children is one of the biggest decisions in life. Some people dream of becoming parents while others prefer to remain child free. So, like me, you know, I don't want any children.、Um, but maybe when I turn 40 or 50, I will regret this decision. But, well, there's no turning back for me. And there are many factors that influence this decision, such as personal values, finances, health, career, relationships, and social norms. So, some of the pros of having children. According to many people that I personally know who have children, is that they can bring you joy and fulfillment to your life. I'm not quite sure about that. Some of them look pretty stressed out when they yell at their kids, but according to them, having children can bring joy and fulfillment to your life. And you can experience the love and bond between a parent and a child and watch them grow and learn. Well, I also teach kids online, so I have watched them grow and learn. So that's another reason why I don't want any children. I, I don't think I need them. But another pro or good thing of having a kid is that it can enrich your social life. You can meet other parents and families and share your experiences and challenges. You can also enjoy activities and hobbies with your children, such as playing games, reading books, or traveling. And having children can also motivate you to improve yourself and your situation. You can set a good example for your children and provide them with a safe and comfortable environment. You can also learn new skills and knowledge from your children, such as languages, technology, or culture. Yeah, there's so many pros or so many advantages to having children. And some of the cons of having children or some of the disadvantages of having children. Are the following. Having children can be stressful and demanding. You have to take care of their physical, emotional, and educational needs, which can be exhausting and overwhelming. You also have to deal with their behavior and problems such as tantrums, illnesses, or conflicts. And having children can also limit your freedom and choices. You have to sacrifice time, money, and energy for your children. Which can affect your personal goals and interests. You also have to compromise with your partner or co parent on how to raise your children, which can cause disagreements and conflicts. Having children can also change your identity and relationships. You may lose some aspects of yourself that you valued before becoming a parent, such as your hobbies, passions, or career. You may also lose some of your friends or social connections who don't have children or don't understand your situation. So, well, the decision to have or not have children is not easy or simple. It depends on many factors that vary from person to person. 
There is no right or wrong answer to, for for everyone. Some people may regret having or not having children, while others may be happy with their choice. I'm happy with my choice, actually. But one of the reasons why some people are not having children is because they're concerned about the state of the world. Yeah, that is the first reason why I don't want to have kids. I, I was planning to have kids before the pandemic started. And then I was like, how am I going to bring kids into this world the way it is right now? You know, the pandemic started, COVID is still around and it's here to stay because never in the history of humanity have we been able to destroy a virus. And look it up. It's true. So coronavirus or COVID-19 is here to stay. But the point is that, you know, there's a lot of Um, climate change, environmental issues, climate change, pollution, overpopulation, social issues such as poverty, violence, inequality, um, and other things, war, you know, the war between Russia, Ukraine, the economy collapse, the de-dollarization. There's so many things going on that made me, um, you know, think about not ever having a kid. Maybe in the future, if everything gets sorted out in the world, which I hope it will, I will adopt a kid because I, I do want to, you know, leave a legacy in this world. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So another reason why some people are not having children is because of their value, well, their values, they value their personal freedom and happiness. They may enjoy their lifestyle without children and pursue their dreams and passions. They may also prefer to focus on the relationships with their partners, friends, or family. Even though all those things will come to an end someday, because we're all aging, right? So maybe someday your friends will not be there for you or your family members will be too busy with their own families to be there for you. So having kids is a good idea to combat loneliness. But, you know, I was talking to the student from Brazil and he told me that his girlfriend wanted to have kids and he did not. He was like 30 something, 36, 37. And his girlfriend insisted on having kids and he told me that he told his girlfriend, give me a non-selfish reason why I should have children. And then she said, well, because um, I don't want to be lonely. And he was like, well, that's selfish. And oh, because I, I, I want to go to, you know, my, my friend's children's birthday parties or something. That's selfish again. So I've been trying to find a non-selfish reason to have kids and I can't. So if you do know a non-selfish reason to have kids, please leave it down here in the comments and, uh, you know, on Spotify or you can go to my YouTube channel or website, whatever, leave me a message. But if you know, seriously, if you know a non-selfish reason to have kids, then let me know <laughs> because I, I have no idea. <laughs> so... <clears throat> And one of the reasons why some people continue to have children is because they want to continue their family legacy and culture, which is, you know, a little selfish, like because they want their legacy, their legacy, they're thinking about themselves. But well, they may want to pass on their genes, values or traditions to their offspring. They may also want to fulfill their family expectations or obligations. And that's not a bad thing. You know, I, I know good mothers. I know great mothers out there. And I know really, really bad ones too. But the point is that it is necessary to have kids in order for humankind, well, for mankind to, to, to thrive, for humanity to thrive. So, well, another reason why some people are having children is because they believe that having children is a natural and meaningful part of life. They may feel that having children is their purpose or destiny. They may also feel that having children is a source of happiness and satisfaction. So, well, these were some pros and cons of having children and some of the reasons why people are or aren't having kids. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and learned something new. If you want to improve your English skills and learn more interesting topics, you can subscribe to this podcast and check out the free transcripts on my website. Thank you for listening and see you next time.